It's Friday, April 24th. I hope you're doing well and staying safe wherever you are. Today on the live stream, we're looking at COVID-19 mobility data and visualizing it in Data Studio. to Adventures with Yufang, where we explore new and interesting concepts, tools, and ideas, live from my webcam to your screen. My name is Yufang Guo, and today I am delighted to be joined by the one and only Felipe Hoffa, back for a second time. He's a Google Cloud developer advocate who focuses on BigQuery and all things big data. How are you doing today, Felipe? Yay! Thank you, Yufang, for having me again here. It's super exciting to be here. Uh, it's super exciting, everyone on the live chat. Thank you to the GDGs hosting us. So yes, you can see that I'm a little hyper. <laughs> yeah, it is an exciting, uh, exciting day, and I am very excited to have you on. It's been a, a very kind of interesting last um, last few, I don't know, last day as you kind of published your uh, now 
increasingly famous medium blog post about Apple's mobility data. So I guess we should start by giving folks a little background about um, you know, what that was and kind of that effort behind it. Perfect. So as you know, our goal for today is to review my best practices with BigQuery and Data Studio. These are my best practices and are the best practices today. So things will change as time changes, but we should still review them. And I thought that, that just to bring something topical, I want to show you the last dashboard that I made with Data Studio, I made public, and it's about the data that I published there. I took the data, I made a Data Studio with dashboard, uh, a Data Studio dashboard, and here it is. You have my blog post there that will load any second from now. Yeah, but so we got the Felipe's blog post here. Uh, empowering Apple Mobility Trends, well, it popped down, uh, reports with BigQuery and Data Studio. Uh, I was really looking forward to this blog post. When you first told me about it, I was like, yeah, this sounds like it would be really interesting. I had no idea where you were going to go with this data set, so um, it was really cool to kind of see uh, where you took it. Yeah. Yeah. Something really, really important to mm -hmm. say here is that I'm not a public health expert. I, you are not I'm either. Not. Uh, statistically speaking, no one watching this <laughs> is. So always take the analysis of people that are not public health experts with a grain yeah, of salt. I left my salt shaker in the like, kitchen, but I would have brought. I could have brought over like a chunk of salt. I was um, considering getting like a salt lamp at one point, one of those like pink salt lamps, but decided against it. It was, it was a little bit too too much. <laughs> it would be interesting to do that. So yes, so don't take my analysis too seriously. Uh, consult real experts, but you, the real value of what we're going to do here is build this dashboard, analyze the data, and put everything together with BigQuery and Data Studio. Absolutely. So I guess you, I was looking at this blog post um, yesterday when you published it, and um, you know you you kind of start out by talking about Apple's da dashboard, right? Apple not only released this data set, which was, if I understand it correctly, it's around kind of cell phone uh, location tracking, right? Of like how much are people moving in different regions around the world and how that's changing over time. Yeah, uh, I'm really glad. Like Google's also publishing data. Uh, there's a lot of people publishing data. I decided to focus on Apple's data because. It needed some makeover, <laughs> and I could help with that. That that could that's an uh, interesting idea for for a show, Felipe. Extreme data makeovers by Felipe Hoffa. <laughs> that would be fun, or an Iron Data Chef. Iron Data. I think there's already something really? like that, but yeah, yeah, but awesome. It, but yes, that, at least the Iron Data yeah. Chef. But I don't play in that game. <laughs> But here in your screen, we can see um, this is exactly what Apple publishes on their yeah. homepage. And they have a curve of Germany versus the USA versus the UK versus Italy on how much the, um, I think here we're looking at driving and how much lower driving percentage wise is in each of okay, these Okay, this countries. one's driving. Yes. So. And my first goal with this was to kind of rebuild this exact yeah. dashboard and make it then make it better with Data Studio. Uh, if you scroll a little bit, you can see what I made with Data Studio. Yeah, so so here we have your version. We I see we have um, some maps attached to it, some numbers and dates with some extra columns in here, as well as the transportation mode. And I see we have these nice filters going across the top to give us a little a little more, a few more options to work with. And I guess we should also, for reference, go ahead and click this link and uh, bring us over to the site just to so show people what that looks like. Yeah, this, exactly. Now you're looking at the Apple site and you can, it's cool because you can download a CSV yeah. from it. You can, you get the live yeah, dashboard. So there's that chart that we saw uh, uh, on, on your post, that screenshot. And we can kind of type in whatever city, you know, you're in San Francisco. And so we see there's the San mm -hmm. Francisco one. We can click that. And we can see the breakdown of the different, um, you know, modalities of transportation and how that's changed as um, COVID-19 and, and coronavirus kind of spread into that region. Uh, but the first thing I tried to do when I got this, right, being on the East Coast, is I wanted to compare East versus West because, you know, they kind of arrived at different times. And I was trying to get this chart to behave and kind of maybe I could put a comma and do New York 
and, or, you know, because New York is in the data set and specifically New York City. And we can see that there. But I wanted to have them somehow side by side. And if somebody in the live chat can figure out how to get this dashboard to give me more than just one city or region at a time, that'd be really nice. Because, right, if I take away New York City, I can get these four countries being compared. But can't, why can't I make my own? Yeah. Exactly. So we could fix yeah. that. Another thing that I kind of love, but I don't love about this exact data presentation mm -hmm. is that you see a lot of uh, week versus weekend noise, like things go up, yeah. things go down, and yeah. it's mostly it's week patterns, versus though, weekend. For what it's worth. Yeah, yeah, of course. If you want the exact raw mm -hmm. data, that's good. If you want to see trends, maybe it's better to get a seven-day uh, average. Oh, yeah, sure. And that I can do, uh, I can pull off way easier in BigQuery. Definitely. Bitcoin. Cool. All right. So I guess and... if we were to download this data set, mm -hmm. it would drop into my downloads folder. I actually yep. got this uh, a little earlier and I moved it into a dedicated folder so we could work with it um, where, where I keep all the kind of files that we're playing with in these uh, live streams. So this is the file. It's just in, in, the, uh, in this folder here. And then I guess from there, we should talk about how we can, what we should do with it, right? How you built this dashboard from the raw data mm -hmm. to get to the state. Yeah. Um, so, if you would you like to open this? Yeah, let's pop it yeah. open. Why not? <laughs> okay, I'll give you two choices for our yeah. next step. Do you want to show people how the final dashboard? Oh yeah, Let, let's Studio do that real quick before or... we try to go through okay. the steps. Let's show the finished product beyond just a screenshot here. Yeah. So I'm going to click on this link if I recall correctly. Uh, yes, just click on the data to the dashboard there. And this is a public. Uh, dashboard. So those of you who are you know following along from the link I threw in the live chat, you can you know follow along, do this too. You can open up this dashboard and you you can go ahead and you know choose different regions and different um, transportation types and things like that and see that all mapped out on your screen as well. Exactly. So let's compare San Francisco with New York since you wanted to compare San Francisco. Yeah, with may New as York. well, right? And I see your uh, default view. Yeah. I like how you made the default view the same as the Apple one. So it's a real side by side comparison. Like I can get back, go back over here and this is literally the same data being shown two different ways. Exactly. So, but if you go back to the data studio dashboard and you click on region yep. on the top, let's say you type New York and you click on mm -hmm. the right and only so we only want to show new york great Click. and now you can search for san francisco Click. and i'll check that one off as well so now i have two regions selected and is there some way to see the regions i've selected other than hover i guess it's just the hover text uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's part of the chart in the chart now you can see that oh, san francisco right. is yellow and new york is great yes. So, and this is just driving. If you could compare these mm -hmm. things, hmm? yeah. So you can say first we got rid of the weekend noise. We have a seven-day yeah. average, uh, and you can see that San Francisco is a little lower than New York. Like, it yeah, goes... it, it starts out a little. It starts earlier and stays lower on the driving side of things, which is interesting. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if we were public health experts, maybe we could say that San Francisco behaved better than New York. But of course, I don't know all of the factors. Yeah. But in this chart, San Francisco looks that we did it earlier and we had a deeper yeah. change. And this is you've uh, normalized it by percentage, which is also an interesting stat as opposed to the raw data. Yes, I started with the raw mm -hmm. data, but then I wanted to go to what Apple was doing to so we could get a comparable uh, chart. OK, that's fair. And can you talk a little bit about the actual values in the data? When I was first looking at it, I just want to take a peek at this CSV for folks. Um, wow, it's really big. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this column, right? These columns of numbers. What do these numbers mean? Because we see numbers around 100, right? 90 something, 101. I know it's really small on the live stream. Um, I don't think I can make it bigger in preview mode, but we'll, when we look at it more, we'll be able to see it. Are these relative to some yeah. uh, starting point? Are these normalized numbers? Yeah. So, okay, for this, people should go to see the definition from Apple. Mm -hmm. But as I understand, uh, they took a 
base number in January 13th. Oh, yeah, I like see that. First this day. first column, everybody gets a assigned value of 100. And as, as I understand it, they are measuring uh, how many people are looking for directions on Apple Maps. Oh, okay. So they are Apple. They own they Apple do. Maps. If you look for directions on Apple Maps, they look at the volume per okay. location. That's okay. So this is like a very so specific slice, people, right? It's people who are looking for directions on Apple Maps and choosing the transportation type of their choice, driving, transit, or walking. And that's kind of the audience. That's the the slice that we're look, working with here. Okay. Exactly. So you pick a base date, and that's why you also see numbers going up uh, more than 100% yeah. because on January 15th, you have way more people doing going out. I don't by many reasons. We have a request here. Uh, please, can we turn on the chart header mm -hmm. to know if it is accelerated with BI Engine? I don't know where that control uh, would be. This is this is accelerated with BI Engine. So what we are going to do in the next uh, 47 uh -huh. minutes, we are going to build this chart. And instead of using my chart, you think you will build this chart, you will load this data and query, and everyone will see the step by awesome. step. I, uh, I can't wait. Awesome. Let's, let's get started then. Yeah. And since, 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 since the London GDG crowd is here, can you add London to this chart? Yeah, let's add yes, London to this chart. New York. Let's compare New York, San Francisco. Let's add London. Any other city that you would like to see? Uh, I think Seattle GDG uh, is making an appearance as let's well. Let's Seattle. Hello, Seattle. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Seattle, for joining us too. And yeah, here you can see the whole, the four different cities. And you can see that London driving disminution is way low. Uh, they had a lower uh, disminution than the yeah. other cities. But also London has a way higher peak. So it also depends on what's your base day. Right. But what you, you can also see is that London is uh, the curve upwards is way bigger mm -hmm. for them. So they had their bottom and now they're uh, starting to go out more and faster than Are the other cities. Are you talking about Seattle? That looks more like that's Seattle. You're talking about the top line, oh, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you. We're, we're That's falsely, why you should never trust my analysis. Falsely implicating. It's good to have a peer review. Yeah. Uh, and I think someone mentioned Chicago. Yes, Let's see if Chicago is in this data set. And it is. Chicago. No, I'll add Chile just for you. <laughs> yes. Da -da -da -da. Great. Now it's starting to get a little Until, bit busy. Yeah. We'll have to the whole kind of keep track of things. Yeah, it's kind of neat that they have different types of regions, right? There's whole country data sets, and then there's city level and region level data sets. And again, this is just for driving. So some cities are more driver centric, other cities are less driver centric. And specifically because it's folks who are searching for Apple Maps, it's not actual amount of driving happening. Um, it probably biases more towards kind of end user consumer usage as opposed to, um, you know, a lot of big cities have taxis and things like that, and they might not be using uh, driving apps as much. Yeah. Now compare it with walking. You, you could yeah. change driving for walking there. So we'll go for only walking. So yeah, we can see at a baseline, San Francisco is the bottom line here. Their baseline walking before all this happened was lower than the other cities. Or no, that's not the right interpretation. They went down relative to the normalized yeah. starting point. <laughs> that's the part that's confusing. Yeah, maybe it was rainy days and it, so, so yeah, there is yeah. a difference, but you can see two different clusters. Mm -hmm. Oh, especially there, afterwards, yeah. Yeah, right now there are two very, very marked clusters. And clustering is such a, a different topic that is also very interesting that I think we covered on our previous we video. Did. So That's right. Can watch That's that right. One. Yes. So let's go build yes. a dashboard. Uh, and you can see also how the map on the right is showing the mm -hmm. locations, it's showing the countries. Like we can add all of these niceties, uh, but let's build it together. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so I'll go back to your blog post then. Um, and I'll try to follow along from here, and then you can help guide me and uh, tell me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> Yeah. So the first thing that we want is we start with your That's CSV. Right. Let's load that CSV in BigQuery. Yeah. So I'm going to go over to BigQuery. Um, I've got a, just like we created last week, a um, temp data set. Perfect. So let, you, we can load data 
I can show you later how to do it on the command line, but let's load it on the web. You can go to your temp data set, uh, click on temp, and now you can... Create table, yeah? How do we... Yes, create a new table. And we'll create a table from upload. Yep. That, this is the easy way, especially with small data like yeah. this one. So let's go up a level. Let's do this episode. Here's our CSV file. It's only 262 kilobytes. So quite mm -hmm. small. Um, definitely not the type of data that BigQuery is used to consuming. Yeah. So th then the question is, why are we even doing this with BigQuery? Well, it's really, really cool to have it in BigQuery because it's completely serverless. So the data lives there. I can share it with others. I can uh, join it with other data sets. And I can create useful dashboards. And it's server completely, absolutely serverless. And everyone has a free terabyte of queries every uh, month. Uh, did I say terabyte? Terabyte. I think that was a terabyte yes, with a T. I said terabyte. Yes. <laughs> but yes, everyone has a free quota every month. And everyone has BING and Data Studio is free. So we can do so much uh, for free. Yeah. And that is really, really cool. Everyone has free storage. So you could do all those things for free. You have uploaded the table, so you have the file selected. This is a CSV. We want, of course, the auto-detect auto schema. So check that we off. We will not need to spend time doing that. Great. And you could also say that you want to skip the first column okay. on advanced, advanced options. So no, no, not the first column. You want to first skip row. the first yeah. row. Uh, header yes. rows to skip. We have a header row. And One. do we have quoted new lines? I don't remember. No, okay. we don't have that. You can just click on create table. This will create a table in BigQuery out of the CSV that we got from Apple. Fantastic. So it says it's created. I'm going to click go to table. And here we are. Mm -hmm. Can I? And we should uh, take a look cool. at the table, right? We all use your, um, I learned this yeah. trick from you many, I guess, years ago at this point. Instead of doing select star from table, you can just click this preview button and get a free query to take a look at what's in any table that you might be looking at. If this was a, if this was a huge table, we would like to partition it or to do clustering, but it's such a small table that we're not going to optimize yeah. anything. And now folks can, you can, can see up close kind of this data. Um, that was too small earlier. We can make this bigger. And this 100 column in January 13th, like, just like you said, would be here. It is here. Yeah, it's there. So there are things here that make me happy, and there are things here that make me run. <laughs> uh, I'm very happy that it was so easy to load the data. Yeah, here it just we could it click basically just me. worked. Exactly. Now, things that make me run. Who puts all a new column for each day? That's not the right thing to way to do things. I hate it. But at least we have the data and BigQuery. Th that's something that we have to fix. And there are so many people these days uh, publishing their data in this way, just adding a new column for yeah. each day. This is not tidy. This is not clean. This is not easy for them. Yeah, analysis. it also, I mean, in terms of why that might be the case, I'm, I'm just trying to think about it a little bit. With tables like this, changing the schema can be quite uh, expensive as a data set grows. Is that, is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Well, here we are changing the schema yeah. every day because every day we are adding well, a new column. I mean. Is that is that that's a bad thing, right? Like that's among the many reasons yeah, why that like probably it. would be not great. Yeah. Yeah. So I wrote a whole different blog post that we could do a whole different show on how to uh -huh. fix this, but I can give you the easy solution the easy now. Easy solution. Let's hear it. Let's go back to my blog post. I will give you a query. Um, by the way, l let me tell you a little thing about those four lines that you see first there, uh, the curl. Yeah. Downloading the CSV from Apple every day in an automatic way is not right. easy. Uh, there is no single URL to do that. So I had to do a lot of discovery and getting that out of a JSON. If you click that JSON there, for example. Yeah, let's open that up. So first you need to open this JSON and this JSON will tell you where the file is, where the base path is. So that was a kind of a mess, but I put it all together in those three lines that will help you get the file every day if that's yeah. what you want to do. I mean, I, I suppose if we wanted to be a little bit hacky with it, you could just open this browser in a headless Chrome 
and then just have it automatically click this button for us and then take the file that gets generated afterwards. Yeah. And I'm just happy, I'm happy with that WGET and parsing some yeah. JSON if I have to. Definitely. Um, but this is my query to transform into tidy yeah, data. This so is... We can copy it to BigQuery and we can talk about it, uh, why, what this query does. And instead of creating a table on the FHB query project, which mm -hmm. is mine, you can just make, replace everything and just write, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to put it in the same and data you can write set. Pamp. Uh, yeah. Perfect. And then you, while I'm doing this, you want to talk a little bit about the query itself? Yep. So the first thing that you can see there is that I'm creating a new table or replacing it. So we can replace it many times and keep improving it. Uh, there's this little line about options that allow me to add some documentation to it, for example. So anyone that clicks on that table now, they can see at least where I got it from. It's very important for people to find the source of your data, especially if you're doing working with critical data, like data that we want to help with these mm -hmm. days. Uh, people need to find not my data set, they need to be able to find the uh, master data set, the source, and they can go there if they see any problem with my data. So that describes the table and makes it visible for anyone later. And now we have the, the my unpivot. And you can see that we are doing, a, we're querying from the table that you just loaded. We're getting the geotype, the region, the transportation type, which was clean data. Mm -hmm. And then I'm doing unpivoted dot star. And unpivoted is a result of a call to my UDF. I created a user defined function. I made it public. I wrote a blog post about it. Anyone can call it now. So unpivoted in this case is giving it A. A is a row from our source table. I'm giving it the underscore 2020. It means look for columns that start with 2020. And um, I'm also here doing uh, casting. I'm transforming uh, array, key value array to a date float. Interesting. Exactly. So I have two yeah. strings and one string I'm transforming it to a date with that uh -huh. format and the number I'm transforming to into a float. So data looks clean inside BigQuery and we can work with it. Uh, to compress all the work that I did there, I can just share the UDF with you and make everyone else like easier. <laughs> and we can use the same UDF with the data that John Hopkins is sharing, with the data that USA Facts is sharing, because everyone is sharing data in this kind of same format. Yeah. And we want to make people's life easier and quick. So, would you like to run this? I would. Um, the BigQuery UI is is a little bit laggy right now as I reshape our window to fill out more of the screen. I might refresh this page to kind of, I, I don't know if it's because of the data set or what, but that is what I'm thinking right now um, between kind of the streaming. But it's interesting to see that BigQuery, the, the website is causing um, a little bit of struggle there. Okay, we're back up again to reload things when I resize the window. And it's not a big data set either. By the way, someone is saying on, yeah. on, on live chat, someone is saying that uh, walking is faster than driving than <laughs> New York. I have a very cool blog post that says that, well, a blog post that I have never written, but it's a very cool joining BigQuery that shows that biking is faster in New York than taking a taxi. And it's really cool that with one join, we can get that result. So thank you, Bob Z, for that comment. Yeah. I like biking definitely. too. Would you agree, you think you live That's in New right. York? That's right. Yeah, biking is definitely uh, preferable to walking or tra But public transit, taking the subway is also a good option, though not in this time, of course. Please stay home. <laughs> yes. So I'm running the query. It's doing its uh, thing. It's showing me the little three bubbles, nice little animation to keep us uh, aware that it is uh, still alive and my browser hasn't frozen. Not yet, at least. Let it go. All right, so it looks like it's finished. And we can head on over to the table. 
I'm gonna try use the preview ability again. Yeah, please. Let's look at how beautiful that data is. Ah. Uh, Jennifer is asking where the data is original came from. I will post the the link to my blog post so they can right. see it. Um. Yeah. See how much how much prettier does this data look now? It's definitely different. Um. So now every mm -hmm. row is one number, which is nice for sure because now it gives us the flexibility you know to to move things around as needed so it's basically uh denormalized in some way right yeah people in the art world like calling this a uh, tidy tidy data. ah is that where the term like tidyverse yeah. comes from and all, all the other kind of uses of uses uh, of tidy? exactly nice. so if anyone here is comes out of the R world, please correct me. Mm -hmm. But yes, this is tidy data and it makes so much more sense than having a new column. And at least here we are sharing with people a way to uh, clean up all of these data yeah. sets that are happening. And our, our colleague uh, Minhas have... is, is on the live chat as well. He is a data studio expert and he's telling us that it's it's dimensional data. So that, that's pretty neat. So I guess we've sliced it by each dimension. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And now we can give this table to Data Studio. That's right. Now it has five columns. It doesn't matter how much data we add to it. It will keep having five columns. So let's click. Uh, now we're going to get into the best practices according to Felipe. All right. I'm going to give you a set of instructions now, uh -huh. you think. They might not seem like the easiest path, <laughs> but it turns out it's the easiest path I found to do these things. I hope the Data Studio team is listening and that we get a way easier uh, path from BigQuery to Data Studio. But this is how I do things. So before you tell so, me that what you're about to tell me, um, I do want to mm -hmm. point out to folks that when I was playing around with this before we started, the only thing I could figure out was if I click this export button, I can click Explore with Data Studio. And that seems to work reasonably well yes. at a baseline level of like, okay, that works. The, the table is connected Good. to Data Studio and I can show some stuff. I've since deleted those tables, but like the charts I made, it didn't look terrible. Let's put it that way. And yes, uh, let, let me give you a warning uh -huh. here also. There are two ways to click to go to Data Studio in uh -huh. the query. I'm glad that you skipped the first I one. I skipped the first, the first one. one. What's the first one? <laughs> yeah. The first one is when you write a mm -hmm. query, it allows you to take that query into that. Oh, screen. really? I can run it straight I into? I don't like that. Where is that? Yeah. Is it under settings or something? Uh, uh, I don't remember. And I don't use it. Maybe it's not there yeah. anymore. But I, oh, yes. So cancel. Yeah, let's not go for there because I don't want to That's teach right. you that. I, I want to teach people to let's skip, skip that. that. Yeah. Don't go from the query to Data Studio. Mm -hmm. First, create a table. That's why the query that I gave you started with create or replace table because we created yeah. a table. And now instead of giving a query to Data Studio, we're going to give it the table we just Great. created. So now you can click on Okay, so, so that was, I, I was going down something that appeared like the right path. Yes. All right, I'm gonna click this now, okay? All right. Exactly, we create a table, then we click export, and it, it's the table that we get into Data Studio, not the query. Don't get the query into Data Studio. I hope people enjoy when I get a little bit in my ranting mode. I've I've been ranting a lot this week. Yeah. Um, hopefully you appreciate it. Definitely. Tell me in chat if I should dial it. <laughs> but I will rant. If uh, we have a question okay. in uh, the live chat that asks whether we need to summarize count by region first. Um, I no, we don't want to summarize it because we want to get each region in Data okay. Studio. Like we want to be able to chart yeah. it. So this table is perfect for Data Studio right now, unless we want to make some changes. Okay, so we are now in Data Studio. The first step was click export yep, Data Studio. Here we are. Now please click on, yes, now please click on save. Oh, I gotta click save. All right, we'll save it. Yeah, I don't want to explain each step. It's just the, all the steps I yeah. have to do to there get many, the data. Many, many steps involved. I'm... Export to Data Studio, save. Now click on share. Share. Yes. Now this is creating a real Data Studio report. Oh, so the previous one wasn't the real thing. It was like a sort of real thing. Yeah, that's not the one I want. I all want right, this all one. All right, so I should add, um, you are about to add yeah, data to, to this report. 
I guess I am. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, you. We just created a data source, and the data source that we created, that this uh -huh. is stable, will be added to this report. All right, I'll, I believe you. Uh, I believe you. So I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll go yes. along with it. It's it's my series of steps that drives me uh -huh. crazy to do each time. But now we are in the place that I want to Great. have my uh, table. We have a table in BigQuery. The table lives in a data source in Data Studio that we mm -hmm. just shared, created, and. That source is part of this report now, and you're giving it a name. That's a very good practice to give a name to your things. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you're left with a huge mess of unnamed yeah. data studio reports like my data studios. Nice. Um, let's delete this table. Uh, By the did way, did you just say uh, delete this table? Uh, yeah, or keep it for one second because there is something that I like uh -huh. in this table. Oh, this table here in the report. Out. Yes. Uh, do you see that icon on the top right? Uh, in the table, this little lightning bolt that looks like yes. AMP. <laughs> yes, yes, that says this table is accelerated by BI uh -huh. engine, and this is what we okay. want. So when we connect a query to Data Studio, the queries many times don't get accelerated. Depends on when we're talking about this. But if we do it today, things will not work as well as if we create a table for Data Studio, and then we connect that table, and then we see that this is accelerated by BI Engine, and we want to have BI Engine in the Yeah, game. accelerated sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and let's delete this visualization. We're going to create a, a different okay. chart. And you can cl click on Add Chart. And we want a time series. Great. Ooh, click to add or drag and draw. Exactly. Fun. Oh, I like how they already added the date, the correct date range on here. Okay. Data Studio makes some good guesses, and sometimes it doesn't. In this case, the date is good. Now, it's charting by default the record count, which is pretty useless. <laughs> <laughs> we need to change yeah, well, that. I mean, it, it's a good gut check, right? At least we know that they reported um, a data point for all of their regions for each of the dates, and there wasn't some, because it would be weird if this mm -hmm. line wasn't flat, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I'll get rid of this and or now, replace it with something else? Yeah, replace it with, value? for example, the value. Yeah, yeah the value is the number that yeah. we got out. Oh, this is a chart of the yeah. values. And is that a sum, I guess, of all the values per date, since this is not broken down by region? Exactly. And I'm not sure we really want a sum. Uh, we, you, you can change the sum for average. There is a better place to okay. change that. I know you want to change it uh -huh. there, but the best place to change this is in the data source. Ah. Because from now on, any time that we want to put a lot of percentages together, uh -huh. um, you can go there click if no scroll up on yep. this list scroll, scroll up look at that pencil uh next to bigquery yeah edit data source yeah this is where we are going to edit the data right. source so yeah, i love data studio it's so powerful it's so easy to do all of this but you need to know these little <laughs> tricks like go to the same thing. Find the little pencil and at the here, top of the menu inside of the <laughs> drop down. <laughs> but once you know it, it's perfect. And that's why we're doing this yeah. video. And uh, here you can change the default aggregation from sum to average. Ah. So why is it that it's better to change it here as opposed to over there? Is it because that because when I change it over there, it does not change it here? Are those separated? Yeah, when you change it over there, it only changes for that uh, visualization. Uh -huh. And if you're going to have multiple yeah. charts, you want to anyone that creates a chart out, out of this data source yeah. to get oh, the I correct see. Value. This column is called default aggregation. So we're going to change the default behavior since the previous default was not useful. Right. That makes sense. Exactly. So sometimes it's cool to change things at the individual visualization level. Uh -huh. But Especially for things like this, we want to change it at a macro yeah. level. This is a problem of the data source, and the data source should know that default aggregation for something that is a percentage is not yeah. a sum, but an average. And we could always put none as well. We could change this back to none, just like we have for some of these other values. Yeah, but average is the one yeah, that makes sense. The, the other values we cannot aggregate. Sure. So and do we want to keep go, this record count on row, or should we get rid of it? 
Keep it. So That's I'm going to click done then. Yes, All click right. on down and our visualization will change. I think we still have to change this to average. Uh, Since this was already created. Yeah, you could delete this chart yeah, too and, and create a new one and the new one should yeah, come yeah. right. Let's just do that for, for um, completeness to, to prove it to ourselves. Yeah, that we did yeah, the right that, thing. That change worked. And we're going to change this to value. And it defaults mm -hmm. to average, which is great. And now these numbers make a lot more sense. It starts from 100 and it moves around. And now we're at, you know, what is it? Less than 50% worldwide um, compared to before, which is exactly. really quite something. How beautiful that we can see the whole world to going down together. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Uh, the next step that you might want to do here is um, you might want to get it by yeah. region. That, that's that's definitely what we the direction we're trying to go to, right? Because this is your uh, visualization where we can select all these things. So we got to figure out how to add all that in. Exactly. So let's go back to your new dashboard. Yep. And in break, go back, click on the visualization, and now click on breakdown dimension. Yeah, breakdown dimension. We're going to add dimension here. Yep. Which one should we do? Um, Region? Do. Ah, let, let's do for fun. Click on geotype. Okay. Just for fun. Yeah, I was wondering about this column geotype. There's city and there's country region. What What's the. I guess, it, what is that trying to get at here? Oh. Uh, this is basically we're comparing uh -huh. cities to countries. Oh. It's a little meaningless. Yeah. Now let's change it for transportation type. Okay, I'm going to move over to transportation type. So now this is worldwide totals, averages, I should say, not totals, of the change, relative yes. change in usage of walking, driving, and transit directions on Apple Maps since January 13th. Yes. And now you can see that the one that has gone downward the most everywhere is yeah. transit for many, yep. many reasons. But transit has gone down more than driving and walking yep. everywhere. In average. Yeah. But what we really want to do here is region. That's right. So can you talk a little bit about what breakdown dimension means? Oh my goodness. That is quite a chart. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, uh, Hillel asks, did I say data from Apple Maps? You did hear that right. We we're trying to getting these, um, this, this is, we're trying to reproduce a dashboard that Felipe made and wrote, um, wrote about here, Apple published their mobility data set. And just as a recap, it lives on this site, right? Mobility trend reports. Yeah. And we're trying to make this visualization better. Um, this is Felipe's version where you can kind of select all the cities you care to see, um, and it can highlight and all that stuff. So yeah, this is Apple's, um, kind of maps usage data set that they've uh, published. Yes. And the blog post is on the same chat. If you scroll up and everyone will be able to see the whole blog post and we will share the URL and we will share the yeah. queries. But yes, uh, n now you have a very messy dashboard. Yes, we do. <laughs> <That's pretty. laughs> it's very chunky and yeah. But, but at least we have yeah. a dashboard. Something that I did to have a pretty look of mm -hmm. this, um, so basically, this shows 10 regions out of the yeah. hundreds of regions it probably that we just, have. It's a grab and bag it, handful. Um, instead of uh, sorting by the average descending, change the sort for average ascending. Oh, interesting. What is that sorting on? It's just trying finding uh, finding out what are the top oh, cities. Oh, okay. Going so to before show. it was showing the the other direction. And what is it? It's sort of on the average of the value, but on what date? Or just across all the dates? Across oh. everything, yes. What is going on here? So, Look at this. Exactly. So these cities are especially surprising. These are the top 10 by the average everything. But at least the chart looks way nicer with these 10 cities. Yeah. Macau, Paris, Milan, Hong Kong, Philippines, Seoul, Albania, Rome, Italy, Singapore. You know what's happening with yeah. that. If you change it to the other 10 cities, the other automatically chosen the, the descending series. version and you click on this yep 
those are the ones that had changed the least. Less, basically. This mean, less yeah. change. So Nagoya, Fukuoka, Japan, Osaka, Taichu, Tokyo, Taiwan, Estonia, Hamburg, they've been worse at staying right. home. And that's why they look yeah. like this. It, it's a big mess. Uh, I prefer the other sorting as yeah. default. And that's how we make things look right. pretty. Um, yeah. Now, another thing is we have percentages and we want Data Studio to understand percentages. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, now, for Data Studio to understand a percentage, uh, 100% needs to be one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we got to divide everything by 100 so, and cast to a float? Exactly. So this is another best practice that I want to tell you when using BigQuery and Data Studio is we could change it. We could do math inside Data Studio. Oh, yeah. But let's not do math in Data yeah, Studio. This Data Studio just for visualizing. Exactly. Let's do math inside BigQuery, and then your base data will change everything, and we don't need to repeat a lot right. of steps. So let's go back to our query yep. in BigQuery. All right. So I've got the query up. Exactly. And now we have two choices. We can keep changing this table. Uh -huh. Or we can create a new table that starts with this table. The cleanest thing that we could do is create a view and create a new table. But I'm lazy. <laughs> let's keep changing this query. And let's make this query bigger and bigger and bigger. So after unpivoted uh -huh. um press a comma. And now write value divided by 100. Do I need a decimal, like 0 0.0 or something? Uh, no, it will be float because value is gotcha. a float. Oh, right, right. Um, call it um, percent. Do I need it as? No, I don't. Ta -da! Nice. Now we will get a new column called nice. percent. And you can click Let's run. run it. Yes. And that's done. I'll go to table again. And we can see yes. in the preview. Boom. Yeah, Monica is talking about uh, how do we interpret this data, and that's why I started like, I'm not a public health expert or a transportation yeah. expert or an Apple Maps expert. Don't take my interpretation as the truth, but we are all here because the real value we want out of this hour is how to work with BigQuery and that. That's right. Yeah. And we can leave the final interpretations to the experts. We are just here to play with data. Yeah. Uh, cool. We have a new column, it's called percent, and now we can use that as a percent in So if I go to the data, should to that I go to here. this view hmm? or this view? I'm still not entirely understanding what this was oh, for. F forget about this one. You close, I can close this tab. the untitled one. Yeah, I don't okay. care about that so one. So the data doesn't like go through here or anything. Yeah, oh. I will show you how we get the new data. All right, here. so I'll get rid of that step. tab, that's gone. And now yes. we're back to this view. What's next? Exactly. And uh, we created a column that is called percent that we cannot see here. Right. Not yet, at least. But yes, I will show you how to get the. Oh, new yeah. It's column not even here. in here. Click on the pencil. Which pencil? Oh, the data source pencil. Yes. Data source uh -huh. pencil. Now click on edit connection. Edit connection. Oh, we're going back somewhere. This is all about knowing the yeah. secrets, and that's why we're doing yes. this hour, and that's why people should watch yeah. this video. And now click on reconnect. Okay, so change nothing. Just re just click reconnect again. Not again, for the first time. Yes. Field changes found. New fields will be added. Missing will be removed. Invalid will be disabled, and changed fields will be updated. That is what we want. Very nice. Very nice. Yes. And percent is there. Indeed, it is. Uh, and I'm going to change this to average again, it, just like we did before. Perfect. You're such a quick learner. Quick learner. I'm I'm some kind of learner. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. Before uh -huh. you press done, before you press done, see that where it says that percent is a number. Oh, yeah. We got to change that to, what do we got? Numeric percent. It's still okay. numeric, but now it's a percent. Cool. So Data Studio natively understands percentages. Exactly. But it doesn't so under. You, we have to make wait, sure. Wait, wait. So we change. We still have to edit this in the dashboard to say percentage. But if the numbers had been a hundred and ninety nine and one hundred five, and we said percent, it would not understand that. 
I mean, if you put a hundred, then it multiplies a hundred oh, for a hundred, and then it's a thousand percent. Yeah. So I guess that that would be my rant um, to the Data Studio team. <laughs> I know. There are many things to run, yes. but once you know the secret, everything is super right. easy. And of course, things will change. The team is really, really good at taking feedback. Minhas is listening here, and Minha has a uh, straight uh, connection to That's the right. DMs. And He's got them on speed he can dial. Either <laughs> stay at my run. Exactly. Minhas knows who to call, and that's why I'm so happy to have Minhas here. And maybe we also have mm -hmm. some PMs here. Oh, and we got an interesting okay. question from uh, on the live chat from Hill. He talked about whether clicking refresh fields would have done the same thing that we did. That's a good question. I don't All right. know. We'll leave that to Minhas but to yes, answer. Maybe, <laughs> yes. Let's add a new field and we will know, but for now, let's go and change the All right. percentage. So we'll say done. Um. Mm -hmm. Is it just me or does it, does it look like nothing happened? Yeah, nothing happened because we're still visualizing That's value. Right. Instead of visualizing value, let's visualize. Do percent. we want to change? Do we have to change both of these or just the first one? Uh, just just the metric. First one, okay. I think. That's we'll see. <laughs> uh, percent. Oh, it changes yes. the other one for us. How nice of it. Very thoughtful. Okay. So now it changes our axis. Beautiful. Axes. But the chart should still look the same since the numbers are, of course, effectively unchanged. It's the same numbers, but we have 100%. Cool. Um, another change that I would love to do here mm -hmm. is that you can see that the numbers are jumping to 160%, to 130%, etc. I don't really care when numbers jump so high. Oh. Like I'm not here to read those numbers. I'm <laughs> here to read the number when the numbers uh -huh. go lower. So to make my chart prettier, I want to cap the jump upwards to 120%. Okay. You want to max out that cap. Is that going to be a BigQuery change or a data studio change? BigQuery change. Like, yes, we can do math in data mm -hmm. studio, but I like doing my math in BigQuery. Right. And since we created the table, we started by creating this table. We don't need to change the query. We just need to change yeah. the table. All right. So I'm guessing we're going to modify okay. this percent value, right? Somehow yes. do kind of a min of the value and 120 uh -huh. or something like that. Exactly. Big query secrets. Would mean work? No, mean would not work. Ta -da! I like your face. Wait, <laughs> I have to rethink about it. Now everybody, what, I don't remember all the the SQL commands. That's the problem. Like, yeah, no, yes, that's why uh, I like SQL. But there are secrets like this that everyone knows how to use min, knows how to use max. But min and max would not work here because min and max are grouping functions. Ah, so if you were building a group, that would give you the minimum of the group. Yes. but we are not building a is there, group here. Uh, we're just transforming. Is there like a row. ceiling function? Yeah, that's the kind All of function right. we want. And they are called greatest and least. Okay, so I should wrap in this, this case, in the parentheses and call greatest on it? Least, least right, because yes, we want least. to cap. Oh, come that's on. This doesn't do the thing. <laughs> I was hoping it would wrap it in parentheses when I type that, but no such luck. Okay, that's good feedback for the yes. UI team. Because <laughs> at this point, so many editors support that sort of behavior. So just least by itself, it's a native function. Nice. Uh, nope. No. List. Uh, so now you want the list of this versus 1.2. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Run the query, which is going to replace uh -huh. the table. Maybe then we can click the refresh data sources thing. <laughs> uh, we, th we, we will not need to do that now because we didn't add any. Oh, ah, OK. So it'll just automatically, magically, automatically refresh. Kind, kind of. of. Nothing has refreshed yeah, I'm yet. Yeah, seeing that, which is concerning. But, but right, go back to mm -hmm. Data Studio. Right next to the share button. Yep, there's a refresh button. There is a that's a refresh button. So that's yes, a different refresh. refresh button than the other refresh button. <laughs> oh, but because we were changing the yeah. schema. When we change the schema, we have to go to the uh -huh. data source. Now we just need to go read the new. This is so much yeah. prettier. Like, the cap is helps us get a, a ceiling for the chart so the chart can focus only yeah. on the data we care about and the differences uh, that we care about right now 
that's highlighted. We have more space to show yeah. those. So now I'm sure folks are wondering, I guess, what, what else we can change. And when I look at the dashboard you made, you know, the two big differences from what we have so far and what you have is you have some drop down filters that we were kind of playing around with at the beginning, mm -hmm. as well as a map. Yes. Yes. So just to uh, go over the best practices, because my focus here is what are the best practices we've acquired in Data Studio is the first one is create yeah. a table. Um, then you have to go through these four steps to get your table into Data Studio in the place I want it. Then we can change the scheme of the table. There is one place that is edit data source where we can add columns, we can change the minimum yeah. columns, and then we get to play in Data Studio. And when we want to change and do math, instead of doing math in the in Data Studio, we do math by replacing the data in the base. Exactly. Table. But let's add some Data Studio sugar yeah. here. For example, the ability for people to change color, uh, the cities that we're displaying. You just need to pick the filter. Yep. Is that add a filter here? Um, so do you see where you can click for add chart? Yeah, up here. Uh, right next to it, there are four Community squares. Right next to it, there is a calendar. Right next to it, there is a triangle. The triangle is the okay. one we want. Communication by icons. So we're going to drop one of these in yes. here. And so now I'm editing what's Edit shown group. here. It says region as the dimension, which I Sounds like it is what we want. Cool. Now you can let's click on view. Let's get out of edit uh -huh. mode. If you click, click on, on view. view and I have, it hasn't opened a new tab, but it is the same window. Um, and I see we have this region thing. I kind of wish I didn't have to scroll. It's because I'm zoomed in, but I wish the scroll, the zoomed in view wouldn't be so, uh, weird. I'm only 10% yeah, yeah. zoomed in. This is another, another rant I have for the data studio yeah. team is when I go from edit mode to view mode, the size of everything changes <laughs> and it makes my life harder, but it's okay. We're going to go back to edit mode very quickly. So don't change a lot. Let's just make sure that you can click on region and now you can click on only one. Ah, here you can see. Uh, let's talk about Japan for a second. Yeah. Uh, let's compare Japan to San Francisco to two things I know. So only Japan, or oh, say only San Francisco. I, I want to get rid of Russia yeah. and there. So yeah, only San Francisco, now at Japan. Good. So here you can see how San Francisco started going down on March 7. Well, in Japan, they were all like, no, we are, have everything under control. We know how to work with this. We use masks, we do everything. But then on March 25th, they were like, uh oh. <laughs> I guess we didn't do such a good job. Everyone goes home. And yes, uh, Singapore, if you add Singapore to this chart, Singapore had a different behavior. Um, let's talk about my friends in Singapore. Singapore also uh -huh. went down. Singapore went down earlier than everyone else. And they thought that they had all under control. So they didn't go down as much as San Francisco yeah. in March. But then in April, they were like, uh oh. <laughs> I think we didn't do the things and right. Some more, and yeah. boom. Now, right now, Singapore is in lockdown until yeah. June. So you can see three different behaviors, uh, countries that you might have seen as modern behavior. Still, the this virus it really knows what it's doing. Yeah. <laughs> like, but yeah, um, again, I'm not a public health expert. Right. Listen to experts, but you can see very, very clearly three cities here that had different reactions. Mm -hmm. Singapore was very early to it. Uh, Japan thought they had everything under control, but now lately, these days, everything is going down and some cities like Singapore, city countries are declaring we are down until yeah. June. So that's one filter. But... Mm -hmm. Now, by the yeah. way, people were asking what I was cooking to what I today? <laughs> last time I had some spinach uh, soup with cream cheese that was delicious spinach potato um, was delicious and very healthy today I'm doing brownies nice so apologies yes, for that yes for those in um, who are on the west coast like Felipe thanks for joining us over your lunch hour okay what change would you like to do on this well, chart now we can I feel like we things. could add some more filters, right? Um, people are probably going to want oh, yeah. to add 
uh, similar to your original uh, chart, the transportation type, especially. I feel like these are the two big ones because cool. geotype is kind of just these two. It's kind of like, eh, not the most important <laughs> drop down. It's important because Apple did kind of a mess yeah. with the geolocations, but that's another conversation we can have when we get All to right. that point. So let's see if I can make this work uh, somewhat independently. Okay, so I'm gonna add this in. Mm -hmm. I said I wanted to make this, uh, what was it? Transportation type. So instead of date, I want it to be transportation type. Oh yeah, and this is a cool thing I noticed the other day. You can actually drag these fields into and on top of the value to replace it, which is kind of yeah. a nice little UI trick. Um, so thanks to the UI team for making that happen. Uh, the metric for some reason is record count instead of percentage, I don't know why. Yes, yeah, so, so that's why how we want to sort yeah. things. Uh, I don't want, I, yeah, you could sort, sometimes you can remove the metric. Oh, shouldn't it be percent? Also what I would do. Eh, it's basically, it's three transportation types. So oh, oh, it's just the by... yeah, it's all the same. Yeah, it doesn't really matter yeah. the order. So uh, let's, let's, let's go back to the yeah. view mode. Now that we have that added, it's so cool you that you can add this so region. quickly. Like I just drop this in and now it works and I can, it's live. Exactly. So now you can, if for example, region, how would you prefer region to be sorted? Click on region. Oh, uh, alphabetical, you know? maybe, maybe not. Exactly. That's one interesting sorting, but maybe it's f better if we sort it alphabetically. Yeah. Or if they could group them by geographic region, but like that's tough too. Mm -hmm. All right. Exactly. So, so now the map. So yes. Um, Oh, you want yes. the map. Or, or maybe okay, there's something else that would be mode. good to add. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure there's lots of things we could add to this chart. But before we can add the map, we have to make some room, don't we? Or will it take care of that for yeah. us? Uh, no, no. You you need to move things around. This is a manual process. Mm -hmm. So you can click on your big chart. Yeah, you're right. It won't. We click on that big chart and make it smaller. Oh, now. poor yes. chart. It is smaller now. Yeah, sorry, we need space for a map. <laughs> Add map. I guess I'll just do the okay. other half. Map geo configuration incomplete. I guess I should click see details. Oh, that wasn't very useful. I was hoping it would take me there. Geo. Okay. Just match. tell the map. Tell the map. The G, uh, region is your geo dimension. Right, and I can drag and drop that in, which is nice. Whoa, cool. Oh, cool. That's it? Kind, kind of. of. <laughs> the thing is that that column region that Apple is sharing is a mix of countries That's and right. cities. And in this case, we're visualizing countries. Sure. You could choose to visualize cities instead. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so like when it says Milan, have it show Milan instead of the whole country of Italy. Exactly. So click on on the pencil. The data source pencil. Yes. We're going back to the data source, folks. Yes. And now where you see yeah. region, instead of text, we want to make it a different Ooh, type. There's a geotype. That is pretty slick. Geotype. And the geotype, let's make it a okay. city. So what's going to happen? You are changing the region. Man, it did not warn me like this when I changed the... Uh, number to percentage <laughs> yeah that, just accept it yeah. we can go back if no, we it's need. just surprising it's not, to me that one had a warning and the other one was just like yeah sure we'll change it no problem oh now cool down. it's zoomed a little funny but other yeah. than that it's... so now it has cities and this is what it starts showing us that apple data is not uh -huh. ideal because why are these cities in the united states uh just go to the view mode. Yeah. Is everything clustered in the United States? Well, these are all, what the heck? Uh, click no. click well, on view. Brazil. So basically it has <laughs> Brazil in the middle of the United States because oh. there is a city called Brazil oh. there, Denver, uh, what else Italy and Dallas are next to each other. Italy. So, you know, for those who are in Italy, yeah, now you are also. There is Italy, Texas. There is also Paris, Texas. Nice. And <laughs> There is no way in the Apple data to know if they're talking about Paris, Texas or Paris. Right. Paris. But, like... uh, but 
we can go there. My friends at Cart are helping me with that. I have a new query for that. But let's fix this visualization. Yeah. Click on Edit. Um, click on the Zoom yeah. area. We don't want the United mm -hmm. States. We want the world. The world. Which one is the world? I don't know. We I have don't... continent. <laughs> I mean, I assume it's not just world. Oh, it is world. Cool. Yeah, it is world. Yes. World. We are the world. <laughs> we are the children. Cool. So now you have the cities well placed because at least Data Studio is smart enough to make a good ah. guess. If you tell Data Studio I have Paris, and if you have the Zoom world, Data Studio will be like, oh, I'm sure this is Paris, France, and not Paris. Is Texas. it? But if you zoom in the United States, eh, I think I mean, so. No, look we at this. See how Italy smart is right next to Dallas. Oh. So this is the other problem. Now that we said that this is cities. Uh -huh. Oh, right. It's... it's finding a city with the name Italy. So it's a mess in the data. We can fix it in BigQuery. For now, we can fix it in Data uh -huh. Studio. Or we could, let's fix it on BigQuery. That will be better. Let's fix it in BigQuery because we like fixing, fixing things sure. in BigQuery. Oh, no, no. If we fix it on BigQuery, we will have. Yeah, it gets messy. It gets very messy. <laughs> For now, let's live with that. Let's mm -hmm. live with this. Let's improve the visualization and then we can fix this. We can make that. A ho we are on time. Yeah, we are definitely running out of time. Down. <laughs> I don't know if folks want yes, to stick that's around. That's why I didn't want to yeah. fix this. At, since we are on time, let me go back to my query and I want to show you everything that I did in my yeah, query. Yeah, in your master query? Yes, for a better closer. Yeah, because I was looking post. at your blog post and you know we what we did when we started was we got our we got the data, we ran this query, then we updated it with this little extra piece to divide by 100 and cap it at 1.2. But there's a lot more that you did here than that. Exactly. Oh, so let me show you quickly this query. This query is doing a lot more. So I started, like, we just started here adding some little transformations. Yeah. If you scroll a little, a little more, it will cast a highlight of the transformation I did. I did a seven day rolling mm -hmm. average to get rid of the weekend. Oh, effect that's, on the so yeah, you, we mentioned that. Where is that? There's the over. Yeah, it's there. If you see my tips underneath, it's yeah, right there. I also have it highlighted. Yeah, I was just, oh, you're saying this is actually the, the code. <laughs> nice. Yes. Wait. So I'm doing the over to get the six day, seven mm -hmm. day average. Also, instead of doing the average, I did the square average Whoa. that gets rid fancy. of, uh, I know, it's fancy. It makes my visualization okay. look better. Um, we got rid of the significant jumps. There you can see the list and why I did list and not minimum. Mm -hmm. We got that. I'm trying to also get the first day that traffic dropped less to less than 75%. Okay. That's done here. And I created a new series ID so we could do the joins in an easier Great. way. So I guess so for uh, uh, closing it out, What's going to happen if I just copy this whole thing and try to use it? Oh, copy that. Will that yes. work? Cool. So, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Let's see what right, happens. So I'm going to put it in here for now in this text editor because um, we got some editing to do, right? Because this is a big query. It's a, well, actually, it's a big query query. Um, and I need to replace this project name. Uh, so everything that starts with FH. This is this, this is temp, and then we have this one. Thankfully, I use the same table names as you. These are your functions, so we'll keep those the same. Yeah, those are um, Is that it? That might be it. Oh, there's more stuff mm -hmm. down here. Uh, these are all referring back to itself. All right, let's see if we can pull it exactly. off. That's the set join that I'm doing to find the first yeah. date. Yeah, this is um, quite the query. So let's see, fingers crossed. Let's see, the validator says it's good. So that's a good sign. Um, really love the yeah, query validator. It, it's such a good practice to just replace the data inside mm -hmm. the query, then I need to do way less work yeah. inside that. And we just replace the data. Can, 
Uh, mm -hmm. And you can use source control on your queries, unlike your visualization settings. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that assumes missing an API. Now, uh, if you press refresh, refresh here, the data, you know dun, that dun, 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 dun. it's going to think for a while. It's still uh, finished thinking. Mm -hmm. Does it look different to you? Is it still supposed to be the metric mm -hmm. percentage, or is it a different column now? Uh, let me take a look, a quick look at my query. So our table now has average seven day, current percent, rank, and percent. I suspect average uh, seven days. Go up to the, yeah, go to the create and replace table on the top. Yeah, you change, you didn't change the initial table. You created a new table. So, uh, in the query, go back to this query, replace the other one underscore initial. Oh. Because that's the one we're visualizing. Yeah, in your, this is what it said in your um, blog post, for what it's worth, just FYI. Oh, yeah, because that's, I wanted to have both. But oh, initial, this starts um, from the initial, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Is it still going to work because I added it, the other one? Hmm. No, yeah, 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 so the initial, right. it will work. Don't worry. It will, it's a quick fix <laughs> because we need to wrap yes. this up. People need to go have lunch, and I, I've already had brownies yeah. today. <laughs> I learned how to make such delicious oh, brownies. Made the brownies. I have like awesome. a, yeah, I, I have a instant pot, a pressure uh -huh. cooking pot now, and I can make brownies inside a pressure cooking. That's very thing. impressive. Instant um, brownies, instant pot brownies. It, oh man, that's very confusing. Kind of, yes. right? It's not instant pot brownies. It's instant pot brownies. <laughs> Did you change anything? Uh, I think I need to change the metric, right? Because the columns are different. Oh yeah. No, no, percent is good, Still, but now what? sort the other way around. Do the other sort. Um, Instead of ascending, do descending. Um, go to Data Studio, change for descending. Yeah, I did. Oh, change for ascending, sorry. No, the, the other one yeah. looks prettier. Uh, do ascending. It's on ascending now. You're 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 a little bit yeah. behind on the street, on the screen share, but yeah. sorry, yes. but, uh, it's still jagged. That's the main observation because uh, all the other changes are not going to be as visible, right? Yeah. So, and if we click refresh, go back to uh, the pencil, please. Yeah. I suspect that we need to pull the other columns in. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of new columns now. Edit connection so you can... and reconnect. You can click refresh. Oh yeah. Let's test that to... out. Okay. Ah. I didn't click reconnect. So, so let's check out this <laughs> theory that um, someone on the, Will oh yeah, work? it seems to work. Did they learn something new? Yes. I learned something new. Thank you, Chad. Nice. Uh, apply. Nice. So we apply that. Um, now we have all these new columns that have appeared. Do we have to make any adjustments to these columns? Like average seven days, is uh, it still number? We have some. Because uh, we're not using them, I guess. Is what uh, you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Make average seven day uh, percent. Yeah. And it's an mm -hmm. average. And down. And we need to change this to be average seven day, right? This metric? Exactly. Yeah, so. Yes. And now we have a smooth chart. That's what I'm talking about. So much more beautiful, yes. don't you think? And now when we pop back over to the yes. view mode and we, we play around with our regions and, and we do what we had before, uh, we can do that comparison that we started with. Uh, we had a handful of cities. Yeah. And you can see that now my numbers are not 75%. Now they are less 20%, less 30%. I also made that oh, transformation yeah. in the ne negative positive values. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to remember all the cities we had before. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna end up forgetting someone, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, get all the yeah. cities. See how cool is it? I have so many more tricks with Data Studio. Uh, me has also has. So we could continue this another time, but I'm glad that we made this cool visualization. And my main message is create a table in BigQuery, make sure, create a table for Data Studio, make sure to replace your values there, make sure to connect things. So and make sure that BI Engine is accelerating your yeah. queries. Things work much, much better if you have BI Engine. For sure. And uh, I guess before we close out, I want to just take a look at the, the live chat a little bit, see if any Folks, any final questions, thoughts? Um, some questions about aliasing of a project. 
for cross environment purposes so that I can don't have to replace your query manually. That would be an interesting feature. Um, consolidation of knowledge. All uh, right, we have this. Okay. And um, thanks, Hil Liao. I'm, I'm saying it right. Yes, I didn't say that, but thanks, Hil Liao, for teaching me something new. I need to say something very, very important to Monica and to Rajan. I will say it as a tweet that I have, will paste in my chat. Uh, please go to that tweet yeah. because this is an important message <laughs> from me. To you. Yeah, and Rajan has been been on a number of uh, live streams, so he he's been a big supporter and and you know big thanks to him for all his help and and you know joining me on these live streams these last few weeks. Yeah. Thanks for all our friends that are here that help us keep this chat yeah, live. Yeah, uh, this was a really especially. lively live chat. So that, that was a lot of fun. And, and, you know, I appreciate it, everybody for, for coming on and hanging out. It's great to, to see everybody um, virtually. And um, I guess other than that, uh, I'll make a brief overview on next week, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, same time, same place, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, and 8 p.m. out in um, UTC London time. And uh, we're going to be fixing my pub sub issues for one, getting that connected through either cloud run, um, cloud functions or Kubernetes engine. I haven't decided which, maybe we'll do it all three ways and compare them. That'd be an interesting way to do it. And we'll be, I'll be uh, sharing how I connected a shared persistent disk to my Kubernetes cluster. So I could have multiple readers on the same disk where my um, massive data set is stored, so I don't need to replicate them across all the instances and still roll out new updates and stuff like that. So really looking forward to that. And I think this Friday coming up, um, my colleague Gonzalo is uh, joining me to go over um, 10 ways to use the new kind of TensorFlow Enterprise um, release and all the different ways you can access them and take advantage of the TFE release. So really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank yeah. you, Felipe, uh, for for coming on today. Can I do three plugs? Three plugs. Yes, let's do it. I'm going to switch the view to yeah. the two Very of quick. us here since since we don't need to show the visualization yeah. anymore. Very quick three plugs is one. Uh, you can follow me and Felipe Hoffa. Thank you, you friend, for adding Felipe Hoffa at the top this time. Uh, that's tweet. right. It's uh, up there. Uh, me uh, here. Right here. Felipe Hoffa. Two. <laughs> if you want to watch me cooking, if you want to watch me cooking, I have this cooking video fighting spam with BigQuery while cooking spam. And the third plug is tell you Feng that you would like to have me back because I have so much fun doing this with you Feng. Thank you for so much for hosting me. I would love to come back again. Yes, yes. And um, yeah, I'd love to have you again. This has been a really fun experiment doing live streams. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you as well as everyone else on the live stream again in the near future. So until then, I'll be back on Monday at 3 p.m. Same time, same place. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Appreciate it all. Mm -hmm.